I want to take you on a tour of Fitzhugh Hall. Many studies have shown that universities that cherish and preserve and feature their historic buildings have a different ethos about how they live, how they look at the world, and how they interact with each other. There's something about old historic buildings that tie us together with generations who have gone before, generations who have learned and struggled and lived together in these same places. Although the history changes, the place stays the same. And there's something very special about that. We received word just a couple of weeks ago that there was something significant going on at Fitzhugh Hall in the foundational structure. We've been watching it for a long time and there have been shifts and we know cracks have developed and it's an old building. After all, it was 100 years ago last month that it opened. But in the last couple of weeks, we had a major shift. And within about a week, there was probably a six inch or more shift in the building to the point that the structural engineers came in and said, we need to evacuate the building. When I pressed the engineer and said, when do we need to evacuate the building? He said, now. I said, yeah, but when's now? He said, right now, not later. It's in danger of falling. We've got to do something. So we immediately went into action. We started to get everyone out. I think the last of them are all out now as we've moved all the materials and the people out of the building. We've moved 39 uh, administrators and coaches, IT department, academic departments into new facilities. And we found a place somehow for everybody to have a new home. So I want to show you what Fit You Hall looks like so you understand the breadth of the problem and understand some of the options we have for solutions. Come on with me. Let's start on the outside. I want to show you the south wall where the most significant problem is evident. Inside you'll see it even worse, but on the outside you'll begin to see how this wall is bowing and how it really is in danger of falling down. We've been able to cut off this part of the campus from folks being around it because if it does come down, we surely don't want anyone to get hurt. We've moved our historic statue of the Bellhaven woman from 1911 who used to be here. But you can see in these cracks a development that is beginning all across this south wall in the center section of it, especially here at the second floor as the pressure of the weight above is coming down on it. And these windows are beginning to push out big cracks around, along the, the ground here and especially right in here where the walls have become separated from the floor joists and the pressure of that is all coming down. Let's start here at the front door and I want to take you in the main section of Fitzhugh Hall. Now this area is not impacted at all. There's been no shifting in this ground. This is solid. It hasn't moved. It's just the east wing where the problem is. But in here are admissions offices and then we've moved some of the areas that were in the other portion of the building into this area as well. This is our admissions area in through here. Hi, how are you? And it's always a lively part of the campus. Hey, Josh, good morning. morning. But from here, you can see into the old wing, and this is where the problem begins to develop. Still getting a few last minute things moved out. This is a stairwell between the two buildings, and this area is very solid. There's nothing in danger here, which is a great thing. This allows us to continue to use the main section of the building while the old portion is out of service. This is even the old elevator shaft uh, that is here. And of course, when we renovate the building, if you renovate more than 10% of a building, you have to bring it up to code. We'll have to put an elevator into this building. Having the shaft already allows this to be eligible histo for historic uh, tax credits as well, which is a great thing for us. Coming down here, this is where the development offices have been and uh, some admissions offices. Come into Larry Mills' office, who uh, is assistant to the president, and you can see up close the significance of the damage. We have, through the years, patched these walls many times, but you can see up here at the top how dramatically it's beginning to crumble and how the pressure is pushing down on above and then pushing this window out. 
if you, it's difficult to see in the camera, but this wall, wall is bowed very dramatically uh, out to the, to the south side. We're getting the last of things out of the building, but no one is still in the office here, which is a good thing, because you can see in this room how bad the crumbling is. The floor above us has totally separated from this south wall, and so it is just really literally hanging there, primarily by the plumbing, which is holding it in place, and uh, pushing the south wall open. If you look into this crack here, you can see the original brick of this building. And when this building was built in uh, 1911, it was brick on the outside after the fire in 1927 when it became stucco. But in here, this has been patched many, many times, but uh, these gaps are dramatic and big, and it would be difficult to show you on the camera, but from here I can look down and see all the way to the floor below us as the gaps to the, to, uh, against the wall have widened that far. Probably what's holding this building up is that these all used to be residence hall rooms. The women of Bellhaven lived here for many, many years, and so there is a ton of plumbing in here as each of these have private bathrooms. It's probably that that's holding up the walls because you can see the cracks here are absolutely enormous. I can easily see into the room next to me. I can easily see all the way through here. I can see up above, and I can see into the down floor as this wall is bowing out so dramatically and is of course in danger of coming down and as we restore it it will have to come down and be replaced. We're down in the IT area now to move IT has been a huge job but we found a new home and I'll show it to you in a moment but you can see here in the office how this wall has so dramatically bowed up and if you can shoot all the way up through there you can see up to the next floor and if you get in the right position you can see all the way up to the third floor from there. This is the north wall. Now, this is not the one that's severe, but you can see even here there's some significant problems as the cracking is taking place. Even the cracking here above the doorway has moved dramatically, split the door open. I think if we're going to be excellence with a personal touch, we better have a much better building than this one. So we've got to bring this back to the life and the vitality it once had, because even here in the north wall, this is not going to stay in place long if we don't totally restore this building. It'll be lost as well. This is on the ground floor of the main part of Fitzhugh Hall, which has not been impacted. So we moved in a lot of people here. One place we want to preserve is our Creating Writing Lab because that program is growing so dramatically. It's one of the only Christian uh, uh, undergraduate degrees in fine arts and writing in the country. But down here, we're moving in IT, and they're finding places to, uh, to call new home. As you can see, they are just barely in. We've got everybody on top of each other. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, how are you, Laura? And so we're trying to fit everybody into down here. Welcome to IT, brand new home, and they have had great spirit to adjust. And I can't imagine trying to move all this equipment and all the connections that have to go with it. Integrated marketing has been down here some for some time, so they're staying. And then Bo and the, and the guys are over here with uh, enough room to barely get it done, right? right. But you're making it. Now we're up on the top floor of the East Wing, and this is where our, many of our athletic coaches have been. They're still moving out, as you can see, but let me show you some of the damage and difficulty that's down this hallway. This room slopes so severely downhill, it's a little unnerving to even come in here, but um, this floor is pushing down dramatically. You can see again big cracks all the way around the windows. These windows are in fear of going out. Of course if we lose any of the windows the whole building would topple on this south side and that's what we're concerned about. One of the unique things about this building was the two floors of it were residence hall rooms for many years. Now on the ground floor it's been many different things. Chemistry labs, it's been the home ec department, it's been other science labs. There's even a swimming pool for some time there on that ground floor. But up here Many of the students live for years and years. Because of the nature of the building and how old it is, most of the plumbing was shut down in these 
bathrooms many years ago. So they're pretty rough and they're really unusable space. So if we're able to renovate this building and save it, we can not only have a wonderful new next hundred years for Fitzhugh Hall, but we can have much better space than what's here now because we have to work around these old facilities. As you can see, they've not been touched a lot and uh, have been avoided uh, in order to just primarily be storerooms and uh, with uh, lots of challenges, lots of difficulty, if we can simply gut this portion of it, which it has to happen in order to save the building, it does become a blessing from God to give us all new space in this facility, which could be a marvelous thing. We're now up on the top floor of Fitzhugh Hall in the main part of the building. This has been the athletic area, but we moved them to Raymond Hall, uh, which was a move about to happen anyway. So we just stepped that up for a few weeks. Fortunately, we had a wonderful place for them to go. And uh, so this now is becoming uh, home to many of those who've been in the other wing. You see they're still moving in, and uh, it's uh, nice to be in a nice, solid, safe place. At the same time, it still needs renovation, and uh, possibly as we deal with the other issues, this can be brought up to speed, and we can have the kind of hall that fits you used to be with the kind of life and vitality it did 100 years ago. This is a view from Fitzhugh Hall most of us don't see. In fact, I'm really not supposed to be out here, but since we're filming this, and maybe the last time we film before the building is renovated, I want to tell to you this story from this location. You see, this used to be two buildings. They were all connected as one. They were built in 1910. Bellhaven started downtown seven months into the opening of the first academic year. There was a fire at the Boyd Street location. It totally burned to the ground. They rebuilt. Eleven years later, there was another fire and totally lost the institution. At that point, the founders gave up and they gave it to the Presbytery of Central Mississippi and especially to First Presbyterian Church here in Jackson. And they built this marvelous facility to move us here out into a dirt road new development, and uh, which eventually became named after the school, Bell Haven. This must have been a magnificent building when it was built in 1911, 250 feet long, all brick, three stories tall. It was out here on a dirt road, but it must have been a showplace for Jackson as people came to see Bellhaven College in their new location. By the 1930s, the new president, Dr. Gillespie, knew that they would need to build more buildings. And so in the summer of 1933, he took a train to New York City to take a course in college architecture. And while there, he needed to work on a project to understand how to build and, and did that through the summer. And at the end of that course, he was on a train going down to see his counterpart at Princeton University, also Presbyterian school. And that morning, he got a telegram from his secretary saying there had been a terrible fire. All is lost. We've given up hope. Essentially, come back as soon as you can. Three hours later, he got another telegram, said they'd had a prayer meeting, that they were going to rebuild. Please come back as quickly as possible and they were excited about the future. I call that the most important three hours in Bell Haven's history because something happened during that time when all was lost to great hope for the future as the building that was the heart of their campus was lost for the third time in really the short history of the institution. You see, lightning had struck this center part of the building and it burned to the ground. In those days, there really wasn't much it could do, so the neighbors gathered, the faculty gathered, the students gathered and watched it burn. There were beautiful columns of, that led onto a porch down in the center of this section and uh, that was the opening to the building. And at the end of the fire, some of those columns were still standing, which is why we still keep the two columns today to remember what was here in an earlier time. I love that story for four reasons. First of all, they made a decision to go forward with great courage and the president wasn't even there. They pressed on. They didn't need any study committees. They didn't need any uh, meetings of feasibility studies. They knew that's what they needed to do, and God gave them the courage to press on. Secondly, I love it that we don't know who was scared, who didn't want to go, who was timid, who was courageous. We don't know any of that. We just know that the power of God came around those people in such a way that they could pick up the pieces and move forward to restore this beautiful building. The third thing I love about that story is what 
you would call the rest of the story. And that's when Dr. Gillespie was in New York City doing that project in architecture. He had to design something. And he never liked this being all one building, so he developed the plan to make it into two buildings and take out this center section. And so when he came back to campus three days after the fire, he came back with fully developed blueprints on how to build this into two buildings. And of course, the fire had already paved the way. God was leading him all the way. And then lastly, I love it, that they put a lagoon in the middle. I think that's to remember the healing waters of God, even during the toughest times of life. But it's probably also a good source of water in case there was another fire. Well, I told that story in chapel just a few weeks ago when we celebrated the 100th anniversary on our campus. I told the students that I hope as an institution we never have that time when we have to have that kind of courage again. But in our personal lives, each of us will have those times. But then just a few days later, Fitzhugh Hall shifted. Maybe it is our time. Maybe it's our time to rebuild and to have the courage. When it seems like we're disappointed and we're we're overwhelmed with both the cost and the inconvenience and the difficulty of trying to get along with this building. This is our time to put our stake in the ground and trust God that he will help us in some way to rebuild this marvelous facility who has, that served so many students for so long. So for the next 100 years, students will also say, my life was transformed on this campus. And Fitzhugh Hall was just a significant part of it as God walked in these halls worked with students, changed their lives, and sent them from this place to be change agents for Christ all around the world.